Now, in continuing with the second part of this, second part of this, we had to pause for a moment. Now, in the second part of this, there's a very, um, let's get this right here. There's uh, another verse that we want to add, very important verse that we want to add from um, Psalms 90. Psalms 90 and 12, which is to teach us to number our days. Speaking about um, the Kena Kotater by by implication, it's talking about our calendar. Psalm 90 and 12, where it says, "So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom." In other words, how important it is to understand time, timekeeping, and calculation of time. So in this particular lecture right here that we're touching on, why do we have a lunar and a solar, you know, saying why do we keep or observe both the lunar and the solar, um, or the, the Hebrew and the Ethiopic, or the Ethiopic and the Hebrew calendar, Psalm, Psalm 90, and 12 is a is a very good reminder and a meditation where the prayer and the petition is that we be taught in order to number our days for what reason that we may apply our hearts in other words that we may apply our minds that we may apply our minds to wisdom you understand know to wisdom to be wise so keep that right there as a as a reference let's just put this up here 90 and 12 um, Psalm 90 and 12 all right and there's other areas of scripture but these are some of the keys Proverbs 1 and 8 um, Galatians 3 and 24 as well as to 25 in fact, that can be extended to 25. This is on the schoolmaster. And Psalms 90 and 12. Psalm 90 and 12 is also another very good um, reference um, to timekeeping. In fact, there's, there's more in that particular psalm. That psalm is, is called A Prayer of Moses, the Man of God, Psalm 90. All right. So now... Why do we observe both a lunar and a solar calendar or our Judeo-Christian or Ethiopic Hebrew? These are terminologies that basically refer to the same essential idea and part of the mystery or the mystery. Part of the mystery behind it is actually the fact that the lunar refers to the mother or the motherhood of God and the law and the solar refers to the fatherhood of God and through the Moshiach or Christos to that testimony so we have this Old Testament lunar and New Testament solar relation some call it a loony solar you understand um, Hebrew calendar others call it the solar lunar but there is a process in other words, we learn from Galatians 3:24 to 25 really puts into proper context the bar mitzvah or the from child to sonship process where we go from, as it says, from heaven to earth, from low degrees to high degrees. And this is very, very important. Now, Revelation is, is the pivotal scripture. Because it's in Revelation now, when we come to Revelation, that the revelation is being made. See, in Revelation now, we're going to get the revelation of this lunar, solar, the lunar and the solar relation to the calendar and to timekeeping and to being taught how to number our days. Because the, the heavens is God's clock. In other words, the heavens. The heavens is God's clock. Now, there's a connection with the Nitzavim, this particular Torah portion, reading and feeding, as well as with the, the Rosh Hashanah, 
you know saying uh, Rosh Hashanah. Um, it said that this particular Torah portion, Nitzadim or Komachuhu, that that it always falls on the Sabbath or the Shabbat. That immediately, that's immediately before the Hebraic Rosh Hashanah, and we'll get into that detail. But here, in Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Now this is sub subscribed, a woman clothed with the sun and the man-child. And the verse reads, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Verse two, just to complete this this um this this uh bait or paragraphical, it says, And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered and pain in other words she pained to bring forth this this new this 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 newborn this new birth now we understand that revelation is often described as being in types and, and in similes so we have to understand that we can look at it as an actual woman giving birth but that's not doing due justice to the to the type of book that revelation is Revelation is just what it says, a revelation, as well as the underpinning of the Old Testament being lunar and the New Testament being solar is a revelation as well, as the lunar aspect of the Old Testament refers to the mother and the solar aspect of the New Testament refers to the father. Now, we have this in what we call our Hebrew Ethiopic or our Ethiopian Hebrew calendar. We begin from the lunar to the solar because Galatians 3.24, it teaches us that the law is our schoolmaster. Now we learn that the law is Torah, is the Ori. So these sabbatical readings and feedings, they provide that teaching. You understand, especially for us as or as disciples of the King of Kings and His Christ. Now, the revelation that's contained in Revelation chapter 12, verse 1 is this. It says, And there appeared a great wonder where? In heaven. Not on earth, but in heaven. So, remember Genesis chapter 1, verses, I think, 14. And we've gone over this. Um, a few times, but it's important. It says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for what? For signs. Let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and for years. So, the Almighty now on the fourth day, it says, that The sun, the moon, and the stars become visible. And these, these lights, as they are called, which are in the firmament of the heaven, are to do what? To divide the day, the daytime from the so-called nighttime or the shadow state, and they are to be for signs. So they're specific signs. They're key for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. In other words, the hosts of the heaven are timekeeping devices. They're not to be worshipped as though they were some gods or some, some creators, but the true creator placed those lights in the firmament to be his own clock or timekeeper, you understand? And for us now, in faith, to be able to interpret. That's why Psalms 90 says, teach us to number our days. In other words, teach us the true relationship of those lights in the heaven with our reality here on earth. So we learn that the lights on the front of the heaven are for the division of day from night, and for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And it says, and let them be for light in the firmament of heaven to give light or illumination upon the earth, to give illumination upon the earth. And it was, and it was so. Now, here in Revelation chapter 12, we have this somewhat to some this mysterious this mysterious um woman 
Some say it's Israel. We say that, yes, it is Israel, but it's the new Israel in her Ethiopic, in her Ethiopic sense. It's the new Israel or the African Israel in that sense. Now, the woman, she is clothed the son and the man child now comes into view. And it says, and there appeared a great wonder now in heaven. A woman that was clothed. Now, let's pay attention to this carefully, and let's use this um, demonstration presentation we have here. It says that the woman is clothed with the sun. She is clothed with the solar, the fatherhood. You understand? Know the father aspect, right? And the moon, the lunar, right? The lunar aspect, it says, was under her feet. And a crown and upon her head, uh, her aras, you understand, or raswa, the raswa, upon her her head, her rosh, or aras, reis, was a crown, a crown of 12 stars, of 12 stars. Now, if we were to reconstruct this in order to put this into order, this means that the she is in She's clothed with the sun. In other words, she's in the sun. As Ethiopically, we say 13 months of sunshine. So she is in the sun, reflective, in, the, in other words, of the Father or the instruction, right? And the moon is under her feet. You understand? The moon is under her feet. Now, we, we actually want to reconstruct this right here, but let's, let's utilize what we got over here. So it says that there's a woman, right? She's in the sun, right? The woman will be in the sun, right? And the moon, it says, the moon would be under her feet, right? And there is, at her head, there is 12 stars. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Let's just say like that, 12 stars. So the symbology... If you can see that over the, the symbology would be something like that. And the woman, let's just say, let's just do an outline right here. The woman right here and her feet would be right here. Right? Right, the, the, the woman. And that, that's not really a woman right there. But um, let us do this. Let us do this to better... Um, image letters let's put the eight there for a woman the eight right there for 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 woman that's that's very rough right there we have better um um artistic renderings of what this woman in the sense in her ethiopic sense would be but what it clearly demonstrates is that she is in her liberty that she's in is a solar liberty at her feet which means her foundation is the lunar aspect or the Hebraic aspect is at her foot. And this is Ethiopia, Ethiopia in her Judeo-Christian sense. At her foundation, the true foundation of holy Ethiopia is Hebraic or is, quote, Judaic. And we have Solomon and the Queen of Sheba as a, a historical you understand, and metaphorical, mystical, some can say, um, even mythical, if you please, but we see this in its historical aspect as well. You understand, so that foundation now is Hebraic or is based on the lunar, you understand, but she is clothed, her clothing now, her, her garment is the sun, you understand, her garment, and now at her head is 12 stars. Now, those 12 stars, of course, when people see that in the context of the Bible, you'll say, okay, the 12 tribes of Israel. And it does make sense that those 12 would, in the context of the Bible, refer to the 12 tribes of Israel. But let us look at something very interesting in Psalm 68. Come with us to Psalm 68. All right? Let's go to Psalm 68. Psalm 68, and some of you know where we're going with this, Psalm 68, verse 31, it says, Princes shall come out of Egypt, it says. Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her, what? Her hands. 
So Ethiopia now will stretch out her hands to God. Now, as we go through this, let's go to Amos, Amos 9 and 7. Let us touch on Amos 9 and 7. Some of you all know where I and I is going with this, but let us touch on that anyway. Amos 9 and 7, because in Amos 9 and 7 is another connective link. Amos 9 and 7. It says, Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? So the Almighty, in His Word, in the Scriptures, we have Psalm. You understand? We have the historical sense of Solomon, the Queen of Sheba. We have Psalm 68, verse 31. We have Amos 9 and 7. We have other areas as well in the Scriptures that point to this unique relationship. How about Zephaniah for a moment? Zephaniah 3. Zephaniah 3. Um, and this is the area that speaks on the judgment of the Gentiles, the judgment of the nations. And we're in a time of judgment. In fact, even um, Judaically, as we are going into the Yom Kippur, you understand, or the Day of Atonement, it is a judgment time as well. But here in Zephaniah 3 and 9 and 10, it says, For then will I turn to the people of pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord, Yahweh, Baruchu, Egziario, Lotu, Sabhat, to serve him with one consent, to serve him with one in a oneness. So now we see this oneness now in Revelation chapter 12, 1, where it says the woman is clothed, the sun and the moon at her feet, and the, uh, at her, uh, uh, for a crown, you understand? It's the 12 stars representing the authority of the 12 tribes of Israel. Verse 10, it says, from beyond the rivers, beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliant, even the what? What's mentioned right here? The daughter. It says the daughter, and the daughter is a female. The daughter of my dispersed shall do what? Shall bring mine offering. Bring mine offering. So now, this is one of the main reasons, and this is some of the reasoning for why scripturally, um, prophetically, and interpretively, we can see that solar and the lunar, the solely and the lunar relation, you understand, in scripture. And this now brings us forward to where we are at the present. And we're going to review now the 51st um, Torah portion reading and feeding that's known in the Hebrew as Nitabim and in the Royal Amharic as Komachihual. Komachihual. One standing. So, my brothers and sisters, stay tuned. More to come. Yah willing. Shalom. Ras Tesafi.